every single day. Um, God says right here, kids are loving the Camwood and are swinging it now in the on deck circle. Um, that's the best thing that they can do, truthfully, um, in games, before games, is lighten their bat up in the right place. We want that bat to be as light as possible right here in our hands because the lighter it is in our hands, the faster we can move it. Uh, if if they, they're using a donut, they're basically yeah. contradicting yeah. everything that they've, they've just worked on. So you don't need a donut. You need a Camwood bat in the on-deck circle because it's putting that weight in the right place and it's making my – hitting muscles, get ready to deliver that bat in the right spot very quickly, fast, and efficient. Um, that was a thing is, uh, you know, you got to think about a donut. What it's doing is it's adding weight to the end of your bat. Yeah. And the whole premise of this cam wood and the reason it was made was because all the other heavy bats on the market are all end loaded. So it makes the bat feel heavier than it actually is, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, it, all the weight's on the end, so it's breaking down your mechanics, uh, forcing you to come around the ball. So with a donut, if you go and put a donut on the end of your bat and you take your warm-up swings, you're breaking down your mechanics before you even get to the plate. I, why would you want to do that? Yeah. You know? So even in college, my routine was I would get on deck with the cam wood. I would do three to four no feet, no shoulder swings with my cam wood, just reassuring my hands. Then I would do three or four full swings with the cam wood, and then I'd pick up my game bat. And I, that was my on deck routine every single time I stepped on deck. Never use a donut. I only would use a cam wood right before I go up to the plate because I'm reassuring my hand path before I go up there. Yeah. And I mean, to me again, it's one of those things that you're you're trying, you're doing everything before that you need to do beforehand to completely take out the thought process in games. Um, the more you're thinking about stuff in the box, the harder hitting is going to be. Um, I tell, I can tell you that from a fact because I was a thinker. Um, I was real mechanical, and Trey, Trey knows we, I would talk mechanics all the time. Um, but I had good mechanics, but I was always trying to think about them and make sure that they were right. I hadn't known about this program. I hadn't. I didn't have every single part, hands, knee, and hip in the right place, to where when I got in the box, all I had to do was swing as hard as I can. Um, that. And I ask kids that all the time. How, how much would that change your game if you could take a swing as hard as you can and have the best swing possible? And every single time their answer is drastically because that's what kids want. They want to swing as hard as they can. The problem is when they do that, if they haven't been through this program, if they don't understand these concepts, their mechanics break down and everything gets out of whack. That's because you have to practice swinging hard. And that's yeah. all it is. Look, if you want to swing hard in games, you got to practice swinging hard. In right. games. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions that we have, guys? Still have a few people joining in. I said, if y'all have some questions, don't be shy. No questions about. Is question. anybody right now still um, playing somewhat regularly? Or is everybody kind of pretty much shut down right now? I'm curious to know that answer. I think there's a bunch of people shut down right now. A lot of people are focused on football season. Mm -hmm. And I've talked yeah. to a lot of dads that yeah. are uh, starting back up here in a little bit. Got a couple of folks still playing some twice a month, perfect game, you trip, stuff like that. That's good. Very good. I got a question right here. I think we have to unmute you, Chris. Yeah, I'm unmuting her now. Hey, how you doing? I just hey, wanted Chris. to let you know my son is still playing. Um, he's playing fall ball. I think he has uh, four games left. And mm -hmm. I wanted to let you guys know I did get him on board with um, starting to practice. That's right awesome. Before his last game, awesome. he finally started, like, thinking I'm telling him something that actually means something. And yeah. he got his first solid hit. Uh, where he actually made it to first base with that 60-90 field because yeah. he's been struggling unless there's an error on the field. Right. Usually he doesn't make it to first base, but this time he actually hit the ball. There was no error, and he still made it to first base. That's so awesome. he saw an improvement. And I'm actually – I was I was um, on a conference call, but I did hear you guys talking about having it on the index, index circle 
and mm -hmm. letting them swing it. And I think that's a good idea. I think that's what I'm going to do for his next game. I'm going to take it with me yes. because he does have one of those stupid weight, weight things. And I know a lot of the other kids do also. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it will help if they swing that bat instead of um, using the weight. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like we were saying, the donuts just putting that weight more to the end of the bat, um, which is kind of contradictory to what we've been teaching. With that weight at the end, it wants to kind of drag through that zone. With putting the weight right here above our hands, it teaches us and reminds us to get our hands through there. So if we can do that right before we step in the box and feel that right before we step in the box, then chances of our swing looking more like that in the game, they're going to be better. Yeah, so yeah, that's and the main yeah. Right compliments too. Like yeah. swinging the camlet on deck, um, you know, reassuring your hands. And then whenever you pick that game bat up, it feels a lot lighter. Uh, when you go up to the plate, you're going to have a lot more confidence. Because yeah. I know as a hitter myself, like if I'm on deck and I swing, and if I didn't hear that, that yeah, swoosh no, yeah. sound, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man, something's wrong. Yeah, I didn't even my straight would go down instantly. Like, I'm not yeah. swinging it hard today. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's times in games where you get tired and things like that. And, I mean, seventh, eighth, ninth inning, and you step in there and you pick your bat up in the on-deck circle, and it does feel a little heavier than it did before. Yeah. I mean, we need to make sure that we don't lose confidence when that happens. We need to reassure ourselves that we can still take a good swing even though we're in a tired place. That's awesome. He finally got a, a solid hit. Yes, and, 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 he could, and he could actually take responsibility for it. Because yes, that's were, the, the that's a huge. Yeah, it was thing. it was always an error, and then he would say, "Oh, I got but I got on base," and I'm like, "Yeah, but if that kid didn't make an error, you would have never made it." Like, yep. you need to lay like, start practicing so you can get nice solid hits, and he actually got a solid hit. That's so awesome. I was that's really it. proud of him, and I think he was proud of himself too. So it, it's small wins like that mm -hmm. that will get him to buy into the program completely. Like yeah. I said, that's how it worked with me. Once I saw just a little bit of success. I got addicted to it. Yeah. yeah, and I think taking the bat to the game too with his, the other kids maybe wanting to like try it out and feel it or whatever, that mm -hmm. might make him want to do it more too. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know why I didn't think of that last time, but I'm definitely going to take it to the game with me. Very on good. Sunday. Yeah. That's awesome, Chris. That's such a good a good thing to hear too, especially with the conversation that we had last week. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Very yeah. good. Thank Very you good. so much too. Yeah, well, tell him to keep it up. And um, again, if he has any questions, y'all – don't hesitate to reach out for sure. I definitely will. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions, guys? That's such good stuff to hear. I mean, that right there is a testament to I mean, why the bat was created, why we do what we do, um, is to see the results that kids can have from training with these bats. Um, does the Camwood naturally promote a specific swing path given the weight placement, meaning east-west swing versus north-south path? Um, it is going to promote better swing path, again, just because the weight is in this position. Um, the whole purpose, and I can – I'll go through here. But it's just really an elaboration or exaggeration, I guess, of why the bat was created. It was based off of the sledgehammer. And if you grab a sledgehammer like this and try to swing it, it's going to get real heavy back behind me, and I have to use my body to get that bat or that head through the zone. But if you replace that weight – the different spot in your hands, right above your hands, it promotes your hands to kind of move that direction easier. Um, it's it's funny how it is because the weight of it does not change. The bat they're swinging with that cam wood is heavier than any bat that they will ever swing. Um, I believe the 26 inches, 32 ounces, there's not yeah. many kids that are going to swing a 32 ounce bat um, at any point in their life. And there's six MLB average. kids that are swinging these bats. Um, so, yes, it does promote the proper path, even if – I'm a firm believer that if a kid takes it and just hits off a tee with no coaching, no anything, they just swing it, they're going to see a little bit of improvement because the bat does somewhat do it for itself. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the whole reason this bat was made, uh, obviously the bat speed and all that is awesome. That wasn't the reason this was made. The whole reason that my hitting coach, Frank, invented this bat – was to teach his son how to have this added weight right here above the hand. So whenever he starts his swing, it promotes him driving his hands to the ball. So this weight is going to drive the hands down to the ball, which whenever we relax our hands and drive our hands down to the ball, our bat is going to get on that natural um, plank. What is that? Uh, line of dip. Uh, I guess you can call it an uppercut. Yeah. It's like a slight little... uppercut through the zone. Yeah. So, uh, the bat itself was made 
to promote the proper bat path of driving the hands through uh, inside that baseball, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's something else, too, that, I mean, there's possibly not a lot of people that know that. I mean, that know the full story on the back. I mean, how the camera was created, why it was created, um, which just kind of sparks a little bit of stuff. We makes me think that we may do something, I mean, a video or something on kind of how the whole deal was created. Because, again, it yeah. was built to fix the swing. Um, as Frank continued to train with it, he applied the knowledge that he had from previous years and the knowledge that he learned from Tony Gwynn and people like that. And there comes the program. But the bat is meant to change the swing path just by swinging. Yeah. And then once he, once his son, because he did all this for his son, and once his son, uh, son started training with the bat, he noticed his hand path got a lot better, but his bat speed also went through the roof. Yeah. So, I said the bat speed is just a byproduct of training with That's this right. bat. The whole reason it was created was to uh, correct that proper swing path. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it can, that kind of gets lost in translation sometimes, too, from a lot of customers outside looking in. They see people that have trained with Cam Woods, and they see all these bat speed increases, and they think that it's just another gimmick to try to create bat speed. But when you get into it, I mean, all the folks like you that are in the program that have been through it with your kids or that are going through it with your kids, you're starting to find out that there's so much more to this bat and to the training than just pick it up and swing it. And kids are starting to have a mindset of their own of how I, I mean, I know for myself how to do this. I don't need other people telling me how to do it because I've trained the right way and I don't have to think. I just swing and let it go. Um, very good. We got another question here. Um, is it okay to choke up on the hand and speed trainer or keep the hands in normal position? Yes, it's okay to choke up um, if kids need to. If they do it for eight, nine, 10, 11 swings, they're going to start moving their hands back down because they're going to be able to control it a little better. Um, but right off the bat, if it does seem to be just a touch uncontrollable, slide the weight of the bat, pretty much I put it right here. I put most of the time my hand would be about this much space from the weight. If they're having issues, I put the weight just a little bit closer to their hand. It's just going to make them feel it a little more. It's going to add a little bit more length on the bottom of the knob. But again, it's really not going to make it lighter. It's just going to do something to their head. They're going to feel like, oh, I can handle it a little better because I'm choked up rather than telling myself it's too heavy because the bat's too heavy. It's not too heavy. You just got to put your hands in the right place. Um, somebody else said, so does the hands – go to top of the inside or middle of the ball. We're always driving inside. Um, and I, I mean, a lot of folks don't know. I asked a kid this the other day, um, where's the inside of the ball? And he pointed to like, he was hitting on this side. He pointed to the inside of the ball. Okay, well, if you go that direction to a pitch that was coming this way, you're going across the line of the pitch. So, when we talk about inside of the ball, this is not necessarily inside of the ball. That's two, that's across the plate. Inside of the ball is going to be here. I want to go inside of the ball towards the pitcher, not hit the inside of the ball. Does that make sense? If you go to the pitcher, your barrel is going to end up inside of the ball. You're going to hit the right part. Ball's going to go where it needs to. Go ahead, Trey. I was going to say, like, like Frank always used to tell me, is the ball is coming in from, I guess, from this way, from the pitcher. Uh -huh. So the same my hand is the ball. We want to drive the bat past it back towards the pitcher. Because when we do that, the barrel is going to come through the zone. That's right. It lines so up. We say we're staying inside the ball. We're driving the bat back towards the pitcher. And we literally want it to be past that ball inside of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we don't take our knob to the ball. We want to drive our knob inside the ball towards the pitcher. And that's going to put the sweet spot of our bat in the zone throughout the entire swing. And I mean, that, again, that's the whole purpose. And it's something that kids really don't understand or realize until you point it out. But you can kind of see the pitch here. If I'm hitting here, the pitcher's out this way. If I'm driving my knob to this pitch, we talk about trying to drive to the inside of that ball, that is not straight in relation to where the pitch was actually coming from. And so we need to make sure that kids understand this is not the inside of the ball. We're not trying to take the knob to the inside of the ball. You're trying to take the knob past the ball and stay inside. You want to be inside 
and pass that pitch so that the barrel lines up. Otherwise, if you go this way, my barrel's gonna be out and around that. I gotta use some shoulders to get my barrel back in that spot. So again, that's something else right there uh, that we see, I mean, with kids, if they don't understand that concept very quickly, um, they struggle with these drills for longer than they need to. We need, I make sure that they, if they have any kind of angled direction, I guess you'd say, to that ball, we stop and we make sure that they understand what knob to the ball really means. It's not knob on the teeth, it's knob inside that pitch towards that pitcher. Yep. And then you can always see like the first movement of the knob. So whenever I'm coaching, I'm always, so I say my camera is where I would stand. I want to watch this knob's first movement, all right? And so if the knob is coming out, then I know that they're coming around the ball. I want to see that knob go from here and side mm -hmm. straight towards the pitcher, all right? So if, you, if they're in this position and you see the knob come out here first, yeah, they're coming around the ball. That's right. It's a very easy move to be able to tell uh, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Yes, and, and I'll do this today when we get off of here. I'm going to share a video. I'll share it in the Facebook group and the um, and on Instagram as well. But I was hitting with a kid that we're taking through a bat speed challenge right now, and we had this same conversation the other day. He, we were talking out of the ball, and he said he brought up a drill he used to do. And I've seen Bryce Harper do this drill. I've seen other people do this drill where somebody tosses in the ball and they hit the ball with their knob. Okay, well, if I do that, I mean, you see that I'm going – I'm not going anywhere near towards where the pitch is coming from. So once he kind of realized, oh, that drill's not necessarily taking me to the right place, I need to be more here, things start getting a little better. Just because he understood the concept of what knob to the ball really meant. Um, Chris mentions right here that uh, she thinks that's what a, a lot of kids don't understand. Um, she had to explain that to her son, showing him that the knob had to stay closer to his body in here rather than getting out here to try to go to that pitch. Very good. That's why I always tell hitters to drive the knob towards the pitcher. Like I said, whenever you tell people to drive their the hands to the ball and it's on a tee, well, the, I want to think about that. The reason we say drive your hands to the ball in a game, the ball is coming from the pitcher, right? right? We do want to drive our hands that way in a game, but whenever you're talking, drive your hands to the ball off the tee, well, the ball's sitting on the outside pitch of the tee right. and they automatically think, okay, take my hands out towards that pitch. And what they're doing is they're breaking down their mechanics. Absolutely. So when we're hitting off of a tee, I always tell my kids, we want to relax the hands and drive our hands towards the pitcher. All right. Yep. That'll keep them inside the ball. Absolutely. Uh, my son's left-handed, left-hand dominant, right-handed batter. So the weight of the cam would made him pull the bat past the ball and he was pushing the barrel. Um, the one hand cam would work great with the cam would bat and help fix it. That's the whole purpose. Yep. Just want uh, just want to mention the one hand bat is great. Yes. Um, that's something else too, that if you ever see kids having issues with this part of their body in their two hand swing, you need to go to that one hand trainer and we need to make sure that their body's not moving when they do that drill. That goes back to the first thing we talked about today, making sure that their mindset's in the right place making sure that they are literally focused on one specific thing, keeping the body still and driving that knob past the ball and letting everything stay in line. Um, and that's the whole reason we use those bats simultaneously, two and twos, uh, one-handers, right into two-handers. That's the purpose. We marry those drills together um, so that one hand gets used to working with two hands and everything's working in the same direction. Very good. Any other questions, guys? For those of you that came in a little bit late and uh, didn't see it, we are running a giveaway right now. Um, we're giving away a full cam wood set, a game bat of choice, and a blast motion sensor all for free. So uh, if you obviously you already have the cam wood program, so you don't really need it again, but uh, you can go ahead and get that next size up. And you'll be able to get to choose what game bat you want. Literally, if any bat out there you want it, uh, you can have it. So I'm going to put the uh, the URL in the chat real quick. And if you haven't signed up for that giveaway, uh, go ahead and do that. Yeah. Um, John asked right here on the two and twos, can you do uh, one-hander and two-hander, two swings each? Yes, that's exactly what we do. Two one-hand drills, lay the bat down, grab the two-hander, two two-hand drills, and we're alternating back and forth all the way through. 
Um, Y'all know as well as anybody else that the program is not, there's not a lot of variation to it as far as the drills. They are right down the sheet. So that's why we have to emphasize. A lot of times they'll get to two and twos and the first three or four sets will be pretty good. And then it's kind of just, it's two swings here, two swings there, two swings here, two swings there. We got to make sure that their mindset, they don't go three, four swings and then lose their train of thought. We've got to keep them in the mindset that that drill is for a purpose. And we need to make sure that we're doing it for that purpose every single time we do it. Um, that's the only way to get consistent is to do it the same exact way every single time. Very good, guys. Um, if we don't have, there's one more popping up. On the weight shift drill with the lower half or with the half of PVC pipe under the foot, what size pipe cut half? I have a four inch PVC pipe is what I use. Um, took it and cut it in half right down the middle. Um, you could use, I mean, a two inch PVC pipe. You really don't have to have a big piece of whatever. You just need something to keep that heel off the ground. We talked about this, I think a little bit last week or week before last. Um, when this pipe lays down on the ground, the whole purpose of it is not necessarily for us to rest our foot on it, but it's to feel our pressure in our toe and keep our heel off the ground so that we're using our hip when we hit. Otherwise, your leg is straight and you're not, you don't have any rotation. You can't turn. So again, if you're gonna get a pipe, um, I like the four inch PVC the best. Um, I've used a two inch PVC and it's worked just as well. The bigger one to me just gives kids kind of more room to put their foot. Um, so again, anything yeah, that looks like really works. Yes, dumbbells. We've used dumbbells before. I've, used, I've even used this. <laughs> yes. If yes. I have an extra on, that. on the side, I'll put my foot up on this. Yeah. Right. Just, I mean, that's a, that's a fun thing about the program, too, is you don't necessarily need a, lot, a ton of stuff. You can, you have to make it work for you at times. Someone um, asked me if we were going to sell that PVC pipe. Like they, they would buy it if we buy it from us? made it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll throw a Camwood sticker pipe. on there. <laughs> we'll throw you a Camwood PVC pipe. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yes, very good, guys. If there's not any other questions, um, then we're going to go ahead and kind of get ready to wrap this up. We'll give you just a minute or two to ask if you have any more. Um, again, reminders of the Camwood Clinic that is taking place November 19th through the 21st for people in the Michigan area um, or any of y'all that are willing or ready or wanting to travel. Um, if you need the registration link, we can have that sent back out to you. Um, I'll try to post it in here before we log off. Somebody asked, have you any advice for the kids that have to move up to drop five game back, currently swinging a drop eight? Um, I would go get the adult Camwood if you don't have it yet. Um, kids that are swinging drop fives and drop threes, we want them swinging that adult bat because that's going to prepare them and get them stronger, more ready to swing those drop three heavier bats when they get to that point. Um, so that would be that absolutely be my advice for for him. Or and another thing is if, if he's dropping to that uh, going to the drop five, uh, go ahead and start doing two and twos with the Camwood and the drop five. All yes. right. Because right now he's swinging a drop eight. So if you want to get him prepared, he trains with a Camwood. Uh, and then when he does two and twos, does it with that drop five, the Camwood's going to make that drop five feel uh, extremely right. light. It's so going to be more like confidence his drop is eight. Never gonna go away. That's right. Yeah, very good there. Very good. I'll go. Um, let me go grab this registration link for people just in case they need it. That giveaway is going crazy right now. Yes, it's a giveaway of all giveaways, folks. Um, the folks that have been through the program and, and seen the results that we constantly talk about, y'all know what we're saying. That, that giveaway right there, as much as parents talk about wanting to buy game bats and kids want new game bats, that right there is the giveaway of all giveaways. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. It really is. I'm grabbing – this registration link right here. So if anybody needs to sign up for the clinic and you have not, um, you can click this link right here and it will take you to the page where you can go through and register. All right. Um, do we know when T's will be back in stock? Uh, Black Friday week, I believe is what we're yeah, we're, right? yeah, we're gonna be selling on Black Friday um, and there's gonna be an opportunity for you to get a T for free. 
I'll, throw, I'll, I'll keep that on the loop. <laughs> Todd Adams. Yes. Yes. But we have, uh, we have a lot of teas coming back in stock um, in a couple weeks. Black Friday deals on the 60 day program, Trey. Uh, yes, that, that will be something that involves the free tea. Yep. So we will have deals on that going. Yes. Very good guys. Um, when are we going to see teas and sweet spots at Dick's? Funny, I actually emailed them this morning. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from them on that because they uh, they want to start carrying softball bats, the sweet spot bats, and our teas. So um, if I had to take a guess, it would be probably four to six months if they uh, decide to do it because there's going to be a test phase first. Um, the Camwood bats, they love. Like I said, we've they just pushed us into 400 stores across the U.S. So um, if, if it's not in the stores near you, it's going to be there pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right, guys, we have had a blast. Um, we do every week. We enjoy this so much. And if you have any questions or any concerns regarding the program or anything that we mentioned today, um, feel free to reach out to us, uh, text the hotline, message us on Facebook or Instagram, any of that. And we appreciate all of your support. We appreciate you guys sticking with the program um, because again, it's only going to benefit your kids. That's the only reason we do this is to see them benefit. So we look forward to next week and um, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Y'all have a good one.